Hello YouTube, I have a problem with my Suzuki. Let's listen to this. The parts were ordered even before the problem existed. As preventative maintenance I wanted to replace the tensioner, the pulley and the belt. I bought the parts online, these are aftermarket ones. Let's open the boxes. This is the tensioner. All the parts were ordered from Rock Auto. I'll put a link in the description below. This is the new idler pulley. and a brand new accessory belt. Let's begin. First we need to raise the front of the car and remove the front right wheel. After that you need to remove the splash guard on the right side underneath the engine. My cover is missing a few clips here, so I've used some temporary zip ties to hold it in place. At the bottom I'm using 10mm socket and a Phillips screwdriver to undo all the screws and the bolts. Once you take out all the bolts and the screws, the cover will let go. The cover is out and these are the bolts that I took out. Take a picture of the accessory belt. This will make your installation of the belt easier later on. Using a 14 mm wrench, release tension on the belt. You have to push clockwise to release tension and use your other hand to take off the belt of the tensioner. Now we're gonna speed up the video here and let me tell you that taking the belt off is much easier than installing it back on. Some patience and it's out. Let's take a close look at the condition of the belt. I'm not sure if this belt was replaced before. The car is 10 years old and it has 222k kilometers or 140,000 miles. And it's in pretty bad shape. And a few more shots to compare the old and the new belt. Let's take a listen at the tensioner pulley. It is noisy, but not really bad. And now let's listen to the idler pulley. And this is the problem. It barely spins. And it makes this terrible sound. I'm gonna start taking off the tensioner and what I'm doing right now is removing the 14 mm bolt to remove the actual uh, pulley. By removing the pulley you will get an easier access to the two bolts that hold the tensioner. The pulley is off the tensioner and now you have two 12 mm bolts one at the bottom one on top right now I'm, I'm removing the bottom one
and it's out. Now we're gonna undo the top one. Now you can take out the tensioner and what happens is that this aluminum tube, the pipe, is in a way. I was trying to push on it but it didn't help. Then I tried to detach it from the plastic clip and unfortunately it broke. The pipe is still sits pretty sturdy. And now the tensioner is finally out. This is the clip that broke. Now to the tensioner. The tensioner has a 14 millimeter nut and the 3 8 ratchet doesn't fit. I had to quickly go to the store and get a 14 millimeter quarter inch ratchet and this way it's shorter and now you will get access to the 14 millimeter nut on the tensioner because otherwise it wouldn't fit. Because there is no room, I'm gonna use this extension pipe to undo the nut. I unscrew by hand the 14 millimeter nut of the idler pulley and there it is. And now slide off the idler pulley. There is a limited room, but eventually it will go out. On your right is the new pulley, on the left is the old one. And what I found out that it's exactly the same manufacturer. So even though I bought aftermarket part, it's still the same manufacturer, just in a different box. And I was pretty happy about it. Now take a listen to the new pulley. and now to the old one. So that was the problem. If you would like to use a torque wrench, go ahead. Here's the information on all the torque specs for the nuts and bolts. Installation of the idler pulley. I've used a pry bar to push on one of the pipes to get the pulley in place. This is what uh, I missed to record when I took it off. Just use a pry bar. The pulley is in place. Now I'm gonna take the same nut, the 14 millimeter nut and screw it back on. And using the extension bar, I'm gonna tighten back that nut. I just made it nice and snug. There is no room for a torque wrench. And now the other pulley is back in place. To the tensioner. U using this technique, I'm gonna take off the pulley of the tensioner. This way it's gonna make it easier to install the tensioner back onto the car. Slide the tensioner back in place and the aluminum pipe is not in a way anymore since I broke the retaining clip and I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Screwing back the bottom 12 millimeter bolt and now the top one and of course in a video it's, everything is more simple, more quick because I've shortened everything, but in reality it takes a lot more time to perform this repair. I hope that this video will help you guys to
see what you're getting into. I'm gonna tighten all the bolts nice and snug. And the tensioner is back in place. Now it's time to put the pulley back on. Put the bolt back in. To tighten use the 14 mm wrench. The tensioner will move and then stop to let you tighten the bolt. Now it's time to reroute the belt. Let's use the picture that I've made before. And it's difficult to film and do this. So I had to just show you from outside. Just be patient, take your time. It's not that difficult. The belt is routed. And now it's time just to put it back on the tensioner. You're gonna put the wrench on the tensioner and clockwise push on it. It will move all the way and use your other hand to slide the belt over it. Once over it, release the wrench and now you got tension on the belt. Time to start the engine and check. Excellent, job done. I'm gonna put the cover back on. All finished. Now let's take a listen to before and after. Like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.